Hola, hola, my name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator and sunscreen fanatic, and today we're talking about just that, sunscreens, but not for your face, not for your body, but for your lips. I have in front of me an assortment of a dozen lip sunscreens, and I'm gonna give you all the ins and outs, what my opinions are, and who these are best suited for, based on skin type, preference, cast, and price point. This is a continuation of my best of sunscreen series, so make sure you check out the rest of those playlists. I'll have them linked down in the description box as well in the card up there, so you can see what my favorite sunscreen recommendations are based on whatever your skin type is, what your skin concerns are, etc. These are lip balms. Fundamentally, what they're meant to do is protect your lips and help to seal in moisture in your lips, and these ones also happen to have UV filters to add some SPF protection. These in no way indicate how to actually apply them to get the proper protection. That's something I always stress in my sunscreen videos is applying enough to get the adequate SPF. They just they apply liberally. So for all the application you see of these that I put these on, I do three to four swipes on both my upper and my bottom lip, kind of mash them together and that's what I'm doing. I don't know if that's necessarily correct. Also worth noting, something that's interesting is that you don't have to just use them on your lips. You can use these on your lips, but also on other sensitive areas of your body, like your ears, for example, since they're kind of small and they can get up in there, as well as your nipples. Worth noting on that one, fun fact. To start things off, it's actually the one lip balm I do not have, but one that I've used before, love a lot, and one that's worth recommending, and that is the Jack Black Lip Balms. Those come in a little squeezy tubes, you can get them in a lot of different places, and being Jack Black, it's one that I consider to be a fairly accessible brand, because you can get it like everywhere. Those are SPF 25, broad spectrum, they are chemical filter only, and compared to these lip balms, it's actually more of a lip gel, kind of a little bit of a glossy situation there. And one thing I really enjoy about that is the fact that you get it in a lot of different flavors, so you have the plain one as well as a bunch of different really fun fruity flavors. They're less than $10. They're really fun to apply and continuously reapply throughout the day. So it's definitely one that I could not forget to include on this list and one that I think is a really good option. First one I have up is from Banana Boat Sport Ultra SPF 40 Lip Balm. This is SPF 40, broad spectrum, water resistant. This one is a chemical sunscreen option. It has avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene. This is one of my top favorites just for the sensory aspect of it. It's technically fragrance free, but to me it does have a little bit of a nice like fruity fragrance to it, probably as a result of one of the ingredients in here, but definitely just a standard lip balm formula. And this one is really affordable. You can get it in twin packs for like $5 in the US, like at Target, Walgreens, whatnot. And next I have arguably my favorite out of all of these, and this is because I really just enjoy the brand. This is from Sunbum. This is their Coconut SPF 30 Broad Spectrum Lip Balm. And this one just smells really good, tastes really good on the lips. That's the thing, it's a lip balm. It's going on your lips. There's a high chance you will be eating these. And so it just, it's fun to have on the lips. This one is a chemical sunscreen as well. It has homosalate, octocrylene, octosalate, and evobenzone, and it's $4 for these. This one, I know for a fact, this is the coconut one, but there's a couple other flavors as well, depending on what your preference is. This is my favorite, I think, overall out of all these, and it's really accessible. Again, Target, Walgreens. And the next is a fully mineral option. This is from Cots. This is their Cots lip balm. This is the lightly tinted one. I don't know if they have a non-tinted one, but being Cots, this contains only zinc and titanium oxide in there. SPF 45 broad spectrum, water resistant this one is lightly tinted and here's the thing with these because I don't know exactly how much to apply if you do just a couple swipes on each lip it looks okay once you get up to the fourth swipe and you have a generous amount on it can be a little bit sus but the thing with this is it's a formula I think it actually doesn't have a lot of a cast where you could easily cover it up with a lip color lip gloss or something that just has more of a tint to it so it's not the most unworkable formulation but just note that is a factor especially because it is mineral based only and this one does retail for eight dollars cots I'm not 100% sure where you can secure it in the US there is the COTS website and I believe you might be able to get this at Ulta as well. I'll have those in the description box. This next one is a Japanese option. This one is from Rhodomenthalatum and this is their Water Lip SPF 20 PA2+. This is a cute little Japanese version. It's a really nice little hydrating lip balm. So you do have a couple humectants up in there. It is an SPF 20 PA2+, and she tells for $5. They also have a couple other like flavors of this one. This one is a chemical option. This one's cute. I really enjoy this one and how it feels plush on the lips. It definitely is a little bit more of a hydrating option and it's one thing worth noting. Some of these are lip balms and protectants in that they only offer emollients and occlusive benefits. This one does have some humectant, so it has offering a little bit more of a hydrating benefit as well. There's a little bit of difference. I do like the way this feels and looks on the lips though. It's definitely very cushy. It is a little bit more of a lower protection value compared to some of these, but again, because it is a more of a lightweight, really hydrating option, it's one that I don't see an issue consistently reapplying throughout the day either, so it's definitely something to consider as well. The next, I have one from La Roche-Posay. This is the brand I really enjoy their sunscreen lotion and 
cream formula. So I was excited to see a stick option. And I just want to note that this is their stick, not lip specifically. I think there's two different versions. This is just their stick. This one is SPF 50 plus. And this one, it has a PPD or a UVA PF rating of 26. So very good broad spectrum protection of into the UVA range. This one specifically retails for $8. This one is water resistant. And this one is a combination sunscreen. You have octocrylene, nano titanium dioxide, avobenzone, and mixoral XL. That is L'Oreal's patented broad spectrum filter. This one is nice. It does have a cast. It feels nice on the lips. It's like nice and like emollient, but it does feature a cast as a result of that titanium. Depending on how many swipes you put this on is a indicator of how severe that cast will be. It's not the most easy to cover up cast, but if SPF, especially UVA protection, is a specific thing you're concerned about, you're at the beach and whatnot, this is definitely an option worth considering because you are getting really good protection, but at a cost somewhat. This is also unscented, so it's good for more sensitive skin types as well. And next one is from Uvastat. This is their SPF 50 lip screen. I believe this one on some sites is called Medicated, I'm entirely sure why. But this one is SPF, very broad spectrum. This one is SPF 50, very broad spectrum. Specifically, it has five star boot star rating on the UVA protection. This one is a really interesting one just because again that medicated thing I'm not sure what it means but it they do say this is meant for very sensitive skin they do also mention this is very high photoprotective value and they also mention that this has tea tree in it so that tea tree plus sensitive skin not entirely sure how that mixes the European way of uh, indicating a sunscreen for sensitive skin is still very confusing to me but this retails for five dollars and this is a combination sunscreen as well this has octinoxate tinosorb s octocrylene avobenzone and nano titanium dioxide it does have that nano titanium dioxide and it does have a cast as a result of that this one is more casty than the La Roche Posay one, I will say that. This one is also not as creamy, but it does smell kind of good. The cast on this is not easy to cover up either. You can see on the application footage, I tried covering it up with my Fenty gloss and I was not having a good time with that. You can still see a little bit of that white cast through the gloss. So just note that this is one I would consider specifically, again, for really high UV exposure situations. Not my favorite for like every day. Next is one from Isden. Isden is a Spanish SPF company. They have like really renowned sunscreens and I ordered a few of their sunscreen options and I had to get the lip one as well. This is their Protector Labial SPF 50 Plus with very high UVA protection. You do also have an SPF 30. Filter wise, it has octocrylene, octosalate, avobenzone, Uvenol T150, as well as Uvenol A. Plus. So you have a good assortment of filters to get that really high protection. This one is a really nice moisturizing option that does not leave a white cast. So, compared to the other ones I talked about, this one gives you the protection value without the white cast situation, depending on what you're looking for. This one feels really good on the lips, actually. Really nice option. And this one retails for $5. So, it's a really good option especially for price points. I think definitely one of the standouts just because of the wear, the sensory, and the protection that it offers. So I think definitely one of my top contenders of the list. The next is one from Ultra Sun, another very esteemed sunscreen company. This is their Lip Protection and Care SPF 30 Broad Spectrum Sunscreen, specifically with PA3 Pluses. This one is another chemical sunscreen. This retails for $8, and it's also, I think, one of my favorites out of all of these. It has Octinoxate, even on A+, and Tinosorb S, so it's a fully chemical sunscreen. Overall, it's $8, so a little bit pricier. I think Ultra Sun is just one of the little bit more of those premium sunscreen brands, but wear experience of this is really, really enjoyable. It's a nice, comfortable sunscreen, no cast. It feels great and looks great on the lips. So a little bit pricier, yes. Having not as high of a value, it's something to consider. This is more of like a daily sunscreen option to me, but definitely one to consider. And the next two options are from a brand called Piz, Piz Buen? Pitts Buen, not entirely sure. Heard of it for the first time going through Boots' sunscreen collection. But the first one I'm gonna talk about is their SPF 30 Moisturizing Sun Lipstick. This is just a standard lip balm. This one is their SPF 30 with three star UVA protection. Retails for $4, so a little bit more of an affordable option. This is chemical only. So you have octosalate, octocrylene, avobenzone, and tinosorb S. And it is fragrance free. Cute little lip balm, really enjoy this. Very easy to get here in the UK. Not sure about everywhere else. Don't know a lot about this brand. I did buy a bunch of sunscreens for them though so stay tuned for that full review but to follow that up i have their other option and this one i got confused about because it said spf 50 right on the front of the packaging and it said this was a sun cream plus lipstick and so i thought this full thing was like a jack black like lip gel situation but it's not so this whole thing retails for eight dollars spf 50 plus is for the bottom portion of this this is like a mini travel size like face sunscreen so you have an option to protect your face but they also have this other option right in this lid, the two compartment lid, where this part is a lip balm. You can screw that and this bottom part is like the sun cream. So super weird. But the lip balm part itself is not SPF 50 plus, it's SPF 30 with a UVA of 
three stars on the boot star system. So I'm confused as to what the main difference is between these two for the lip parts, but it's chemical still. This one specifically is octosalate, octocrylene, apobenzone, and tinosorb S, and I believe it's also water and sweat resistant, whereas this one doesn't specify that. I think that resistant part is for the lip balm as well. I don't know if it's just for the like cream part. And the last option I'm gonna talk about today, and this is one that was inspired after I read the Yuba stats claim that that was a lip protectant that could also be used on the cheeks, the nose, and the nipples outside of just your lips. This from Neutrogena, and this is one I have to look into because my boyfriend raised some concerns, but it's something I'm going to consider and look into. This is the Neutrogena Beach Defense Water Plus Sun Protection Stick. I'm exploring some sunscreen stick options, and this is one of my favorites just because from Neutrogena, this is my favorite sunscreen line that they offer because I just really like the smell. This is SPF 50 plus, broad spectrum. This is water and sweat resistant, and this is literally just a sun stick, which to me is an oversized lip balm. The one point my boyfriend brought up was, is there a difference in formulation between lip balms and sun sticks that the lip balms stick on your lips a lot better and adhere? a lot better as a result of that. I don't know, but this looks and feels equivalent to a lot of these on the lips. And I also just like the big packaging. This is $9, so it rivals the price point of some of these European sunscreens I was talking about. So one to consider, but definitely one of my favorites. Again, like the sun bun because I just like the sensory behind it. These smell delicious, like putting this on my face. This is also a fully chemical option. This one is avobenzone, homosalate, octosalate, octocrylene. This is scented, so just know that, but I like the way this feels on my lips. So definitely one that if you have sensitive skin and beware, but if not, that's a cute option. It's also a little bit more price effective to me because you get a lot of product out of these. So and with that, that is my review slash recommendation for really great lip products. Let me know down below in the comments what some of your favorite lip sun protection products are. Did I mention any of them? Have you tried these? Make sure to hit that subscribe button, notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.